biggest fear is a line mower. I hear a motherfucker say my name, watch how I John do him. I blindfold him, duct tape to hold him. They bodies are broken, exposed it, and ass is soaking. I'm popping pills and smoking, overdosing on hydrocodone. My story keeps unfolding, a prophecy growing. I'm on a mission, but I'm very these snitches who scared of a conviction. Leaving the scene, but I'm leaving no witnesses. I just look at it like I'm saving somebody a sentence My name won't be mentioned So motherfucker, let's get it As I time to miss you Tick-tock of my decision <laughs> Will leave your fucking signing strip Problem On my grave, I'm not going underneath uh, Call it luck, I'm just getting what I reap uh, Should have died, <laughs> angels kept me on my feet uh, That's why these demons gotta kill me in my sleep uh, on my grave, I'm not going underneath I never go another window without heat Gotta face it, just can't turn the other cheek That's why these demons gotta kill me in my sleep So we're around, but still summer square room Aided by the streets, only objective is to chase loot Of my own too, that's how I feel it Street life full time, no intermittent I ain't scared of a sentence Accusation like clue That sycamore blue is terror Hoping who's your roots Looking for the troops I lead my army through the field Ain't gonna send the pawns March through the blood spill I'm so like a pill I alter your mind state But your lack is hard Call a part to the high stakes Do this my way My reputation savage When I was down, bitch I divided up the fractions And multiplied the addicts Just to get the back up Seem like I'm always down This shit don't add up You big man, huh? How I feel that I stay loyal Acting like my brother When you mean more to me in the soil I'd rather smoke a foil Oh, there we are. That's my fault. I was working on this, uh, like that audio of this guest. I was waiting on him to come in. There we go. Right on. Well, hey, it's Monday. Love y'all, guys. What is going on? Uh, oh, oh, is, uh, the really that that uh, you're putting it out there, really, right now, this week? God, no. <laughs> oh my God. I'll tell you what. It has been full of all kind of different things happening. Uh, I I am busy and sore and exhausted and <laughs> between broken ribs and and everything else, it's been uh, it's been a lot. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I, they, they, you know what? I got some pretty good kids right now, so there's no there's nobody. It's not, it hasn't been like that. It's uh, they listen and they're taking direction pretty good. So it's been good. It's been great. Got news of a new project. I'm not really going to put it out there yet. Yeah. Not yet, but keep it on the real. Some possible Hallville stuff. I know. I the seat is like a foot off. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> so Joe, you been? Can, Joe, just come up a bit. So you can just come up a bit on your chair. Miranda's Miranda's oh, at I a pretty good level. I didn't know if you had the mic, the camera set. No, Miranda's at a pretty good level. You're fine coming up a bit. Oh, I, I just did. You're better right That's, there. Yeah. yeah. That's perfect. Right on. All right. So it's been a crazy week, though, for all of us. <laughs> so what's with you? Anything new? It is Monday, love, just, just in case. <laughs> it's Monday. Yeah. Don't confuse everybody, Miranda. Monday. <laughs> but anyway, so tonight we have somebody rather special. I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited. And we only get exclusive. We don't even get an exclusive. We don't even get an exclusive. 
<laughs> it's all good. Sometimes be like that. Are are hey, are you hot? Hicker Billy short. <laughs> Pretty good. How are you guys? I am great. Where am I here? Doing really good. Yeah, I do. Um so Uh, Facebook, Instagram, best ways. Um, definitely a shout out to my producer, Mills. You can find him, uh, Beats by Mills, and now he's also doing uh, Orthrus Beats. Other than that, not really. There we go. Right on. Hey, can you do that again just in case we had you were real low on our levels and we got everything set? Can you go nope. ahead and do that yeah. shot again? Sorry about that. Here's good right now. So definitely a shout out to my producer Mills. Yeah. Um, he's part of MBD Entertainment and Orthrus Beats. You can find him on Orthrus Beats and all that. Um, Beats by Mills. Right on. Hell yeah. That's about it. My mama, mom and dad, my old lady. I'm sure they're listening. So right I got on, family. You gotta have you gotta have the support though. Right, definitely. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, I uh, was born in Jackson County. Grew up in a small town called Parma, a little farm town. I actually didn't even live in Parma. I lived like five miles out of town. And uh, now I live in Lansing because of work, but I hate it. So definitely looking to move back out to Parma as soon as I can. <laughs> Understand that, man. Yeah, I can't stand it here. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. I hate coming into the city and I live here. I hate it. <laughs> right. Luckily, my family still has a farm out in the middle of nowhere, so I can go out there and get away. That's cool. Nice. Very yeah. Nice. I'm just city all the way around. <laughs> I can't get away from it, work in it. It's all good. Exhausting. Get used to it. Exhausting. Yes, it is. Um, and dangerous, man. Dangerous. It's been. Yeah, I lived down in Jacksonville for a little while. That was definitely a whole other level. Yeah, it's it was a big ass city. Oh yeah, Florida's wild, man. Oh yeah, I haven't been to Jacksonville though. That's not. I haven't been there. Man, it was far enough north that it didn't get too hot, and none of the hurricanes hit us. So. Oh right. Definitely the spot in Florida. Sound like a perk. <laughs> right. Hell yeah. Get a little flooding. That's about it. Right on. Yeah, yeah, you know, around Indianapolis, unfortunately, it's a uh, crime is 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 definitely on the up. <laughs> That's so, yeah. yeah. So, um, started doing this five years ago. Well, I started messing around with music five years ago. Um, Sorry, we're trying Some to roll with the microphone. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Go ahead. Keep going. But uh, no, I started messing around with music like five years ago, writing a little bit, tinkering around on guitar. Didn't really start taking my songwriting series till about three years ago. And then I didn't start recording until like a year ago. So I'm still pretty fresh at it. I actually just linked up with a producer in May. So I had like 40 or so songs on my YouTube that were not professionally produced, just me. I wrote them off as practice songs. So when I found a producer and started doing professionally produced music, I just deleted all those. Wow. So basically those are my practice songs. I've had a few of like my OG fans, I guess you'd call them, say like, hey, you're gonna redo this one and make it sound better. So there might be a couple that I redo, but for the most, I kind of just wrote those ones off. Right on. Yeah, but you, it would be beneficial because you've already wrote and you already know kind of like what you want the beat to be. Yeah, I just always like to move forward. So, like, I there's actually you, one that I recorded. Yeah. It's just one of those things. There was one I recorded, and I felt like I was taking a step back. It didn't sound the same or anything, and I just wanted to keep moving with my new music. So maybe once I have time and I'm not working full time, I'll go back. But 
No, I got you, dude. I mean, sometimes, I mean, especially when you're first starting off and you're you're getting things together. Like I, my my band, when we first got together, man, we had a show like in a month. It was crazy. We had some of uh, some uh, another band that we just kind of pulled together and made a new band. And it was, it was the most, it was terrible. <laughs> it was so humbling right off the bat. And man, but from where we went for and grew, you know, so like things that you have in the past, that's not showing the same growth. I can get like kind of cleaning that off. So where you can almost start fresh, at least social media wise. Right. Right. So. right. And I get that, but you also want to watch your, how your growth. Do you not? Uh, I mean, but I get, I mean, but like he says, like now he, he, he's in a, in a studio and he's producing professional quality. And then, you know, it's like when people take cell phone shots of your show, sometimes they sound good. Sometimes they sound like shit and yeah, they're, they're yeah. you know, and if you sound like shit to people that's never heard you, that's going to be their image. So I get, exactly. you know, you know taking some of the old stuff where you're just starting to become and finding yourself and kind of right, wiping it clean, clean and just starting, starting over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Um, what, what's your favorite part of your process? Of the writing process or the whole thing? The whole or thing. I guess, honestly, music videos, now that I shot my first music video, I'm, I love that. At first, I thought I was going to be camera shy, and after about a half hour into it, I was like, "All right, I'm feeling this." <laughs> that is the that is one of the parks, definitely. Have you had? Uh, let me let me ask this: Since you've been doing music and taking it seriously, have you had like your most embarrassing moment yet? Oh yeah, that was uh. Saturday. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went out to the mud bog and uh they had a live man afterwards. So I backed my truck up and I have a big sticker across the back window of my Silverado that says Hickerbilly Short Music. So I backed my truck up. We're gonna hang out and watch the band and everything after the mud bog. And one of the guys on stage saw the sticker, called me over and was like, Hey, you wanna get up here and sing one? I was like, Hell yeah. And they didn't, you know, none of my music was appropriate because there was kids in the crowd. So we were talking like, oh, let's do some old country or something. They said, you know, Johnny Cash. I was like, definitely sing some Folsom Prison Blues. So I did all right. The first two verses, kind of, you know, like you said, it was humbling for sure, especially <laughs> last minute like that. And then uh, the guitar player kind of kicked into a badass little solo. So I'm looking around and I got, kind of caught up in the moment and I've listened to Folsom Prison Blues 10,000 times. It's one of my favorite songs, but I got so caught in it that when it was time for the third verse to kick, I forgot the first line of the third verse and I'd turn around and look at the drummer and he picked it up for me. And then I picked up, but like you said, very humbling. I was like, Oh shit. All right. <laughs> that's but, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's that that's definitely because we have had where <laughs> people have forgotten lyrics oh, man. to their own stuff. Well, and we've had some people shit in their pants. Yeah. <laughs> we've had a stage. whole bunch like straight in the middle of the show that they couldn't get off the show and they were trying to hold it and it just uh, it just ended up happening. <laughs> and he oh finished, shit. He it sat there and finished worse. the show. Yeah. With it could be worse. It could be worse. So Yeah, that's wild. I mean, I don't think I'd forget my own lyrics, but I never thought I'd forget Johnny Cash uh, either. So you, you know what? I've I've had I, I've had a show where some shit happened out in a crowd, and it threw me off to where it was like, oh fuck, where, <laughs> where was I? What right. was I, what I was mean, I? you know, when you get flashed a couple things yeah. when you're not prepared for it, and it was like, whoa, hey, I, like that picture right post on. <laughs> whoa, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's cool. Um, what mud bog did you go to? It was called Plan B Mud Bog in Sheridan, Michigan. Nice, right nice. Who was the who was the group that was playing? Uh, man, I wish I could remember. Slim and the Shredders, something like that. Slim it was Slim Shredders. and something. Cool, cool. So, <clears throat> who would you say are your 
biggest influences in the genre? Um, in the country rap genre? Yes. Definitely up church without a doubt. Gotcha. Um, also, Adam Calhoun. Um, I love some Adam Calhoun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely Long Cut, Demon Jones. Um, I'd say those are my biggest influences. I mean, I listen to them all. Right, that's what's up. Uh, some big Smo, definitely some Smo. Oh, I'm actually Smo. been talking to Smo. Hopefully, gonna be doing a song with him soon. So, hell oh, yeah, that would be very cool. I look forward to hearing that. And also, keep in mind if when when you start dropping stuff, you can tag me in it, tag the page in it. Whatever Definitely. you want Tag to do, me to in help. it. Yeah, we'll, to help. We'll all send it out. Mm -hmm. So when oh, we yeah. start dropping stuff, we'll share. Like I promise, book, I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the music video drops September 17th. So yes, and we have the teaser to that. Is that true? Hey, do we want to go ahead and play that, or we want to wait? No, we can play it. We can play. It. You sure? <laughs> you seemed brought it up too early. It seemed a little bit. No, we can play. It. We can we can rewind. <laughs> <laughs> God, love you. <laughs> Let's rewind. Oh my goodness! But party uh, at the farm. Here's the thing. Uh, yep. Here's a teaser for party at the farm, y'all. You get thirty-five seconds. Y'all motherfuckers ain't ever been to a party at the farm. Come check it out, Hickabilly style. You know how we do it out here in the sticks It's a party at the farm, been up since fucking six Had to work all day, yeah, you know how it is On the job site, thinking about getting fucking lit Let the boss hear this, we don't give a shit Motherfucker don't even know how many times I almost quit Party at the farm, everybody's getting lit From the north to the south, that's how we do it in the sticks I like it Right on little teaser for all of you Monday Love fans out there. Yeah. I love oh, it. yeah. I like it. It'll like be it. fun. Yeah, it'll be awesome. So what is your writing process? Do you hear a beat and already have lyrics wrote or? Um, I guess I have like four different writing processes. <clears throat> so my favorite way to do it is when I hear a beat something in the beat sometimes it'll be the bass sometimes it'll be a piano whatever it is will stand out to me personally the most and i'll base my hook off of that then i'll turn the beat off write my verses with no influence of the beat and then turn it back on and make the flow of the verses fit the beat that's my favorite way but i try to write almost every day so sometimes i don't have a beat or anything like that and i just sit down and write something it might sit on a shelf or i might end up using it later but writing is my most natural talent. So that kind of just comes to me and I try to stay sharp on it just every day. How much do you dedicate per day towards writing? Would you say Honestly, I, I got kids and I work full time and run a side business. So it depends on the day. On the weekends, a couple hours a day for sure. <clears throat> um, during the week, like at least 15 minutes, but Writing comes to me so naturally that I can write a song in 10, 15 minutes. And then if I need to tweak it to make it fit later, I can. So usually just whatever I'm feeling just comes out on the paper right off of it. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. That's a rough process sometimes, depending on what you're trying to do. I watched you guys do it. And <laughs> that's rough. I, I mean, it can be. It, de it depends on. It just depends on what's going on. Usually, I was the one doing the lyrics while everybody else was working on the beats. But see, I had a, I had a whole band and working on on that kind of thing. So, see, was, that's uh, been that's been my biggest trouble is finding a whole band or people that I can coordinate to work with because I actually want to do country music. Okay. Okay. Usually, when I started writing. I was just going to do country and I would write some stuff and it would come out like rap. And I had a couple buddies that rapped and I'd be like, Hey man, I'll study these lyrics, stuff like that. I sold one song to a friend. So then I actually ran into Upchurch okay. down in Nashville at Nashville Speedway. Got to take a picture with him and everything. Talked to him for a little bit about music. 
And I was like, man, I keep writing this shit that comes out like rap. And he was like, well, spit that shit. I was like, all right, hell yeah. So <laughs> it kind of kicked my ass in high gear. And right after that, I bought recording equipment, started going at it. Absolutely. That's awesome. That's what's up. Hell yeah. So do you remember, do you remember at, at what age roughly you were when you like fell in love or sparked the passion of music in you? Oh, uh, when I was eight. I remember asking for a guitar and never got good at it, kind of gave it up until after high school and then still not that good at it. <laughs> I can pick a banjo better than a guitar. So I've right been toying around with the banjo more. It just feels more natural to me. So yeah. Oh, yeah. actually got plans to put a banjo in a beat too. Oh, there you go. Be I, cool. You know, we put right. we put effects on a banjo. <laughs> it, it was wild as hell. It had like a distortion, like an electric guitar and shit. It was it was fucking. Yeah, crazy. I've seen those electric banjos. Those things are crazy. It's, dude, the sound you can make out of those is nuts. It's it's super cool. It's super cool. We did we had one in the studio one night, and and my guitarist was just going crazy with it. It was it was really good. Scott was a monster on the guitar. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's he still is. Yeah. So, ideally, you would want to go strictly country. No, not strictly country. Now at this point, the country rap has been natural to me. So originally, I was like, I'm going to do the country rap first because it's easier to produce a beat or get a beat from my producer and write some shit for it than it is to get a whole band together. That's been my biggest trouble is finding, like I got a couple pickers that are like, yeah, we'll go to the studio with you, but getting them all at the same time, even to rehearse is hell. Everybody works, so. Yeah. yeah it's so hard. ideally, sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're good, you're good. I was just gonna say, it's, all I was saying it was that it's hard to keep a band together. It's hard to get the right people dedicated. It's hard, it's rough. But anyway, go back. Yeah, that's why I'm, so I'm kind of going at it solo too, you know, like I would rather just pay some people to come to the studio and you know what I mean? Stuff like that to play for me in a band because yeah. you don't have to deal with if everybody gets all pissed off about something and, oh, well now I'm pulling my part of this song or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to deal with all kinds of bullshit. Right. Yeah. It, it is a lot. Of, it, it, it sucks. I mean, we, I, I kept Hallville together for about eight and a half, nine years, kind of. But it, unfortunately, COVID and losing a key member in the middle of COVID, it just kind of, it was, you know, it's been rough. Yeah. It's been rough trying to get everything afloat. Yeah, definitely is. So do you by chance have any shows planned up for any time in the future? Um, I got a local guy that keeps telling me he's going to get me into this rap show on Devil's Night. I don't know how much salt to put to it, so we'll see. Obviously, I'm not at a point where I feel like I should be doing my own shows yet. I don't have enough of a following or anything like that, but trying to build that and then definitely going to be doing shows. Hell yeah. That's I'm cool. pretty business-minded, too, so I have a whole plan. I'm not just like, I'm going to record some music and throw it out there and see what happens. Right. You know what I mean? I understand marketing and branding and all that shit, so... Right. Trying to actually go at it with set goals and plans. Well, yeah, with the with the decal oh, yeah. on your truck. I mean, look at, look oh, at yeah. the advertising. Driving billboard. Yep, yep, exactly. Very, very smart. Very, very smart. Um, so what sparked um, Party at the Farm? Um, actually, that was originally a song I was going to do with Smo. And his manager felt that it didn't fit his brand. So he was like, let's work on a different song. And I was like, well, I'm not just going to scrap this one. So I wrote the second verse for it and went and recorded it. And then I was like, damn, my family's got a farm. Might as well throw a party at the farm and record a music video around it. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. I can't wait um, to see it. You said the 17th it's dropping? Yes. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And where all can we find it? Um, video, I think I'm just posting on YouTube. Unless you guys have recommendations for anywhere else. The song will be Spotify, Apple Music, 
right. basically everywhere. I mean, Snapchat. I mean, I mean, that's about the, the, the best way to go is dropping it on everything and, and putting it out there. Right. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know. There's a, there's some of the other uh, video uh, websites like Vimeo and, I mean, stuff like that. But, I mean, really, YouTube is your monster that everybody should right. really be focused on. Yeah. It's a process, isn't it, Wyatt? It's a process. And it is. <laughs> because I did all my practice songs on YouTube, too, I actually built a little bit more of a following on YouTube. Right on. So, like, I didn't even have Instagram until I started professionally producing music. And then I was like, shit, I guess I better get on Instagram. Yeah. So, yeah, because of that, my YouTube page is a little more built than everything else. So, I feel like it'll do all right on there, too. Okay. Yeah, it's so weird that Facebook runs Instagram, but Facebook's numbers are dropping. Instagram is growing. <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> People would rather just drop a picture and a it quick... takes too long to yeah. scroll through. There, everybody needs everything right now, right now, Immediately. right now. Oh yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's why I had to get on TikTok too. I didn't even have a damn TikTok. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not big on social media but that's just the world we live in you know yeah. if you're gonna do music and especially independently and you might as well you gotta use it. social media drop it on tiktok make it a little real right do the little little videos yep absolutely i'll put the teasers and stuff on tiktok and all that and clapper instagram reels all that shit that's what's up hell yeah um <coughs> do you have a project that you are currently working on uh i have three actually well i guess three songs that i'm working on that are going to go on an album and then so i'm putting together my first album i'm not really i know what i'm going to call it but i'm not hyping that up until after the music video and then i have a couple of songs recorded for it um a couple more that i need to record and then i I can get people together. I want to throw a country song on it, but that's still up in the air. So kind of a lot, but if you had an option of anybody, any artist to collab with from any genre, anywhere, who would that be? From any genre, anywhere. It could be, it could be, I mean, it could still be in country rap, but I mean, like if you had the I opportunity mean, to go, I want this person and I want this and I'm going to do this, what would that combination be? Instantly, I would definitely say Upchurch, obviously. Um, that's actually a dream slash goal of mine that doesn't really have a date. Just at some point, I want to do a track with Upchurch, but I don't want to do it so early in my career that I feel like I'm riding Upchurch's coattails. I'd like to get there on my own and then be look at him from the same level and be like, hey, man, you want to do a song? Right. So that's kind of something that I'm just like one day, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know if you guys have heard of Billy Strings. No. He's a kid. He's actually from Michigan too. I think he's like a year younger than me, and he so, blew up on YouTube. Now he's touring with uh, <clears throat> Bob Weir, the guitar player from The Grateful Dead. Okay, doing shows with them. I mean, he's huge now, and that dude shreds on guitar. I mean, Hell and yeah. I've seen him on a banjo and shit too. He's a true ass picker, so it'd be cool to do a song name. with him too. But I have to look <laughs> him up. Did you say Billy Strings? Billy Strings. Yes. Strings. He's from, uh, I think it's Muir, Michigan, but it's in Ionia County, which is about an hour from me. Gotcha. <laughs> the video that he actually blew up with was at a party in the basement out there yeah i've seen this kid yeah 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 i oh, know yeah. you're talking about now okay yes yeah he's out there doing his thing now man that's awesome that's glad to hear that's awesome Very see a lot cool. of missing ta talent that lose their their opportunity at times so that's awesome really yes. cool yes you have to be prepared oh, for yeah. when that phone call comes yeah you don't get a lot of them. <laughs> right. But now, I mean, you know, I, I, I think I think times are different. I, re I mean, of course, yeah. in people, there could be overnight successes. But I mean, like, I think the game is totally 
so different than the whole record label days. You you can still get a record label that can still be supportive and stuff, but there's so much more you can do as an independent artist if you have the right crew together. You know, it, once you can pay everybody, <coughs> that's the game changes. You know what I mean? It, but mm -hmm. yeah, uh, definitely. It, you know, you get you get some free help, but it, it's still that's the difference. You know. Uh, Yes. Record labels got all the people they pay and they take a huge cut and all this. But back in the day that, you know, if you got the call, that record label, boy, you better jump on it. Yeah. Now it's like, eh, I don't know, you know, let me think about nah. it. And then honestly, a lot of them are offering really, really crap compared to back in the day. You know, it's very yeah. minimum where they'll help cover a certain amount of stuff. And then you're, you might be stuck under their label and, it's see my uh, biggest thing is i've always had a problem with authority so ain't no record label gonna be able to tell me what to do because the first time i'm gonna do something that i want to do and they try to tell me i can't i'm gonna be like fuck you that'll be the end of that so you know and i've always said my bad go ahead man oh no 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 you're good you're good go ahead go ahead, go ahead. i was just i was just gonna say i've always said uh i would never sign to any record label except maybe holler boy records <laughs> so Got if it. church hollered at me, I'd probably be like, all right, man, especially because I know he probably wouldn't fuck me over either. So, right. Otherwise, right. I'll do it on my own. I'll get there when I get there. You know, I'm not going to yeah. take a quick out to try to make it fast and be under someone else's thumb. And, and where I was going, uh, it really don't matter what level you are, too. I mean, look at look at Prince, mm -hmm. for example, all those years. Prince had to go under the symbol because he he was getting sued by the record label and he couldn't yeah. he, he lost his name and most of his original songs yeah. and all because of that with the record label so I mean yeah I, I if you can do it on your own I think that's the best way to go but yes. it's a lot and you got to get a oh, good yeah, team around you the more I dig into it the more I realize how much it actually is it's nuts. But oh, it's crazy. I'm putting together a pretty good team, so there you go. We'll get there. Absolutely. That's, what, that's the most important part is having a good solid foundation. Oh yeah. 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 Like I said, my producer, man, I mean, he changed the whole game for me. I was I had gotten to where like I know how to make my voice sound good, my flow sound good and everything, but I still didn't have that professional production touch. And the first time I went to the studio and heard my own shit professionally produced, I was like, Oh fuck. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, his name in my phone is the Wizard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> First time I came home, I told my old lady, I was like, "That dude's a fucking wizard." That's awesome. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, a, pro a producer's the difference between. I mean, really, a really great producer. Like we were just talking, Post Malone. Mm -hmm. His producers have been the same through all of his big labels. Every song, they're like, I'm not even sure how much he writes of them anymore, but. If it wasn't for them, he wouldn't be where he was at. True. It, cause I, yeah. It's it's a, it's amazing their production level in his music. It is phenomenal. I really get into that and like as a whole, as a team, their producers, their editor, their mixers, or masters, it is flawless. It is fucking beautiful, and it, it it is a difference having a good producer mixing and mastering your shit. It does. Oh yeah, big time. Game. Absolutely. That's what's up. So where you're at, you're still, like you said, you're still kind of at the beginning. What would you, what advice coming in and what you kind of playing off of what you just said, how much there is, what advice would you have for somebody coming into the industry or thinking about coming into the industry? Um, Practice, 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 and watch out for the snakes. Because yeah. even at my level coming into it, I mean, they're out there for sure. I've met people locally, and I've had tons of people online, you know, they're whether they're trying to do some bullshit promotion or scam you for this or that or sell you someone else's beat. I mean, it's out there. It doesn't matter what level you're at. It is. It is. And unfortunately, a lot of artists fall victim to it pretty hardcore. And then they give up. 
Yeah. And I mean, I've always been pretty good at spotting a snake, so. There's a lot out I there. I haven't really had too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And man. maybe not many snakes, but uh, people that promise shit that cannot pr produce. Yes. There's a lot of that in every genre. It's not just country rap. It's in every genre. You got little promoters. It's like, oh, we got this, this, and this, and this. And you get there. It's like, what the f this ain't nothing you promise. What the hell is this? And it was all, you know. Yeah, that's that's why I said tentatively that rap show on Devil's Night because that guy, I don't know, I feel like might not be much salt to put to it, but who knows? Right, right exactly. You never know. And I mean, you'll be surprised on what hustlers are out there and then the ones that's like, dude, I really thought you was happening. And then it's not. I got a, I got pulled in and we were supposed to, we were supposed to, uh, you know, they got South by Southwest uh, Music Festival in Austin, Texas, and uh, there's a, heard of it. There, there's a sister one that's North by Northeast, and okay. it's it's uh, up in Canada, and it's a huge music festival. And I worked with this person that was putting us on the show, and we were getting dates. Like I was starting to book, making sure everybody had their passports, and it was all bullshit. Damn, all bullshit, dude. I don't know how much money I put into getting shit ready for it. I was ordering shirts. I think I had a crazy amount of shirts ordered, and it was just like, whoa, dude. <laughs> so at least we didn't yeah. get there and didn't have a show, and I had everybody there. You know what I mean? You know, at least I didn't get to that. Right. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> it, it was crazy how, how much bullshit people will do. I think at one time this person was a uh, – they was a, a big in the old rock scene, like Metallica in the warehouses back in California. Like I legitly think, but from my understanding, they kind of lost a uh, little bit. Life kind of was a little hard, went a little crazy and didn't come back. Uh, Damn. But, and I think that we just kind of got caught in one of her episodes, uh, but it was, yeah, it's crazy. It, yeah. It's, it's amazing. Uh, the bullshit that can be out there yes but there's so much good shit too so i don't you know i definitely don't want to throw it, it's all negative it's it, it's it's awesome it's a fight it's a lot of work but yeah when you get those shows man it'll pay off Absolutely. oh yeah definitely i mean really you just gotta be able to think critically man i mean you can see when someone's trying to bullshit you if you don't get all caught up in the hype and you know what I mean? That's most people just get blinded. They don't stop and think about anything. They're just like this person saying this, this, and this. Hell yeah, let's go. Yeah, I'm one of those people right. that I'm always like, hold on, I'm gonna go smoke a joint on this and think about it. And if two plus two ain't equal and four, then fuck you. I ain't dealing with you. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much out there that they're parasites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're straight up. There it are is. parasites that use people's necks like rungs on ladders. Well, and I and I think and, and here's another thing. I think there is some people that are trying to get their way through the scene, but they promise shit they can't do. And it's maybe not necessarily them being bad, it's them not being true about what the situation is. You right. Know, don't promise you're gonna have, you know. Adam Calhoun on a show or on a sh on an album, if that ain't gonna, you know, if you really can't do it, just be like, hey, I got a couple artists, blah 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 blah. Hey, this right. show is that, you know, be honest mm -hmm. and be real, and it'll get you a lot further than, you know, you might get enough hype to grab a couple big people, and then come to find out you, you, it's fucked, and then your name is just right. done. Yeah. You know, they're gonna put it out, and hey, don't work with them. You Absolutely. don't want to fuck with them. And, right, and that's actually this is the first time on your show is the first time I said something about doing anything with Smo, because until about a week ago it was still like a up in the air type of deal, and then he finally gave me like a solid yes. So now I'm like, all right, I can actually say something about this now. Hell yeah, man! That's gonna be awesome, man! I can't wait. Oh yeah, That'd be great. awesome. Hell and yeah. do be sure to tag us, tag me. Oh yeah, definitely. Show, tag the tag the page. Absolutely. And for all our late viewers out there that's coming in, make sure to rate, subscribe, like, share, YouTube video, everything. Just take a few moments, find the links below, and share the love. Yes, absolutely. And even if you may not like it, 
somebody, somebody will. on your friends list Absolutely. Will. You know, share the love. Not everybody likes everything. You know what? We ain't going to change our channel, but share it. Somebody does. Yeah. There's a lot of people out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So within the next five years, what what's what's the five year plan? Five year plan is uh to have my own place with a nice built recording studio, have an established name in the music industry, be doing regular shows. Um by year five, I want to have at least ten albums out. So I'm just getting started on my first one. I expect that like I said, I'm business minded. So once I start making even just a little bit of money for music, I don't care, a couple hundred bucks, every penny of that's going to go back into music. It so if I make 400 bucks off a song, that's going to go into 400 bucks for the music video for the next song. <clears throat> so I feel like once I get a couple albums out, about the two or three year mark, I should be able to start cranking three or four albums out every year minimum. That's so a lot. That's a tall order. <laughs> that is a lot. Hell yeah. <laughs> the only reason I'm not at that level now is A, money, and B, I have to work 40 hours a week. So that's 40 it, hours a week I can't spend on it. music. Yeah, yep. I get that. Yep. You got to provide. You got to keep the shit alive. You know, keep the oh, yeah. family safe and all that. So understand. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So the name, where where did that come from? Uh, that was actually something that I was called in high school. So where I grew up, went to Western High School. There was Parma, where I was from, that was a little farm town. And then just on the other side of the high school, about six miles, I think, from Parma, I don't know exactly, was Spring Arbor, which is a real, real uppity, churchy. They have Spring Arbor University. It's a church-based college. And the biggest church in the area is there. I mean, super uppity community. Gotcha. So going to school, you had all these rich kids and all the farm kids in the same school. And before Duck Dynasty came out, before being a redneck was cool and all that shit, we used to get picked on for that shit. You little fucking hicker Billy and you know what I mean? So that was one that I got called a lot and it kind of stuck. It was a joke for a little while. And then I had someone be like, man, you need a music name. You need a stage name. Mm -hmm. It's like hicker Billy Short. Right on. I like it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I was wondering what that was going to be. <laughs> I know. Yes. That's that's a proper one. That's one given to you. So you can come you come by it, honestly. Right. You know. Yeah, it was that. crazy, man. All the farm kids all played football and all the rich kids played soccer. I mean, the whole school was divided as hell. It was real weird. That's crazy. I can imagine that though. I, yeah, I've lived in a small town and my kids have went to a small town school and it's, it's rough. See, you know, I, I think that was the perks of growing up where I grew up because like I, my school was small, but everybody hung out with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, at least I did. I mean, I know there was some clicks, but like it was so small. Everybody knew everybody. So we all hung out together and uh it, it it really helped me be really diverse it really yeah. was so yeah that's i mean we had a couple of crossovers my best friend lived in spring arbor but i don't associate with him with the spring arbor kids because he was always hanging out with us doing country <laughs> shit so right right what's happening that's awesome i don't know oh you looked all lost over there no um, <laughs> i thought something was happening somebody just came in the building yeah yeah. Now, what what is on the to do list for the next year? For this year? Yeah, for the rest of this year. Try to finish the album. I want to be able to finish the album and put it out before the new year, hopefully. But new year is my mark. How many tracks are you looking to drop on that? Probably only about eight because of the level that I'm at. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So okay. eventually I want to get to where my albums are an average of 12. But for the first one, I think I'm just going to run with eight. If I get the ninth country song done in time, then cool. Otherwise, that'll be a single. Gotcha. 
I got you. Very smart. Very smart. Keep them rotated. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. And you got um, you got a pretty good uh, feature list going already. So I, I perceive. Oh, what, a, uh, what other features is there? I mean, you got Smo. Who else you got on this one? No, it's all been me. Other than that, I got Smo coming up. I've been talking to a few other people. Oh, I got you. I thought there was features, something but... I missed there. So... No, no, that's so that's only... cool it's though. I mean, but that I mean that's a good feature to have for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, yeah. I might put uh, my buddy's stepson on a track. He's still in high school, but he's always been real into up church, and he was at the music video shoot. Yeah. So after he saw me doing my thing, he's all super inspired, and that's what it's about, man. Inspiring the younger generation to do the same thing. So. Oh yeah, you know, man. Awesome. Parents talked to me and were like, "Hey, you got someone to get on a track with you?" I was like, "I'll send him some practice beats. Tell him to start practicing. Once he gets his flow on lock, hell yeah, we'll go to the studio." That's awesome. That's so. I guess that's a feature I got coming too. Hell yeah, that's even funner and though. That's hell like yeah, be a cool project just because you cool. got your boy in there. So hell yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, is there anything? Is there anything that I? Have not or Joe has not asked you that we should have. I mean, shit, this is my first podcast, so <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the experts. No, I just I didn't know if there was anything that you definitely wanted to cover that I missed. What What's the name of your album that you're coming out with? What's the name of Harmatucky? Harmatucky. Why that? That's that well, that's see, I like that. That's what we always mm -hmm. called Parma growing up. Um, I'm not sure where it came from. It was actually like our parents even called it that. So I've always, I'm from Parma, Tucky, motherfuckers. <laughs> right on. Yeah, on a couple of songs. And actually the I, first hat I got made said Parma, Tucky. And I had so many people from Parma and around there ask me for them that I'm going to get a bunch more made. Start selling those along with Pickerbilly short merch. Hell yeah. There you go. That's very, awesome. very. That's fun. Yes. yes, absolutely. Very ingenious. Oh uh, yeah, gotta rep the hometown, man. Always, always. Mm -hmm. Now, what what kind of support are you getting from home? Like when you have shows locally, and we are like, what kind of cr crowds are you looking at? Like, because I know some of our artists when they start getting out on tour, and they start going to different places that they start having almost a bigger pool out of state than they do at home. Well, obviously I haven't done any shows other than the mud bog and messing around singing at bars type shit. So oh, right on, right on, right on. Okay. But, uh, I thought you were doing stuff before you went to this. Like, I didn't know if you were jumping on other stuff. I got you. I mean, yeah, I got like a buddy that plays bar gigs and, I'll sing a song or two with him type of thing, but doing my own original music, I have not done any shows. Gotcha. I got you. Okay. I misunderstood that. I apologize on that. No, it's all good, man. Um, but as far as the support I'm getting, a lot of it is coming from home now, but before most of it was actually random people. And just recently, like in the last month, I actually think it's kind of funny too. You know, I've had, a lot of support come and then I've had a lot of people that talked a lot of shit before and now all of a sudden they're like, Hey man, so I'm just like, it's already starting. I ain't even, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just getting going and yeah, people are already popping back up like, Oh, what's up? Just keep in mind. They they're in the past for a reason. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, people, I mean, they do change, but. Got to really watch the, the the fake being around the right people to work up with too. Yes, that's uh, that seems to be a little bit of a some people getting the wrong little groups in the music scene, and then they're like, "Well, we should be here," but the people you're with are all here. It's like you, you sound like you got the you got the right direction going, you know, bumping in. Oh yeah, to uh, Adam uh, up church and talking to Smo. So. Uh, definitely aim high, man. I, I think you'll rock it. It'll be uh, it'll be great for you. Definitely, I have a huge vision, and I know how to get there. So I'm always aiming high, man. I'm aiming for the top. 
Hell yeah. I knew that when we first started talking. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. All right. Let's, I did a question earlier, but if you could bring any artist back from the dead, any artist at all that you could do a song with or just hang out with hell, but who would that artist be? Man. That's a tough one. So the first thing that popped in my head was Jimi Hendrix, but then I started thinking about hanging out and actually doing a song with, and it'd definitely be Johnny Cash. Okay. Which version of Johnny? <laughs> Good call. Uh, I mean, I mean, to be honest, I mean. Maybe right after he cleaned his shit up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Good timing. Good Give me timing. Not like a 90 year old nine inch nails cover. There you go. There you go. Yeah, not quite there. Not quite the eating birthday cake in the bushes. Somewhere in the middle there. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. So have you had your, like, have you had a starstruck moment yet? Um, Kind of when I met Upchurch, but it was more at the end. Well, at first I forgot to shake his hand, which... Growing up, like, I always shake everybody's hand when I meet him, you know what I mean? And I was just like, hey, what's up, man? He stuck his hand out, and I was like, oh, Jesus, what the fuck? You know what I mean? But, um, and then at the end, I, we were talking about weed, and, you know, I'm in Michigan. We grow up here. It's all legal as hell. So, hell yeah. we started talking about weed, and I was like, yeah, I grew weed up in Michigan. He was like, oh, shit. I was like, I got a joint here, man. Fucking gave it to him, and. He, you know, he was hanging out with his dad and everything. It was at the racetrack. It wasn't a music thing, so he wasn't doing shit with fans. I was trying to let him have time with his dad and all that shit, so I just handed him the joint, walked away, and then ever since then, I've been like, damn, I should have stayed and smoked that motherfucker with him. What the hell? <laughs> so that was kind of my starstruck moment. It happens. It does. It happens. It really, really does. Or I've seen quite a few times people hand something up on stage and then it goes to come back down and they're just like, <laughs> I love it. I, I genuinely, genuinely love that. Um, that reaction with people that, that moment that they get to see up close and personal who somebody they, they look up to and learn from. I right. think that's, a, that's an amazing moment. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist, too, so in the back of my crazy head, there was, I never, never did I ever think, like, oh, Upchurch isn't a real person, but it was just, like, a subconscious thing. Once I met him, it was like, okay, he's not just, like, a computer simulation, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this dude's actually real out here doing it. That means I can do it, too. Hell, yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I can, I can vouch. I mean, he's look at Jelly, he's dude. out there I mean, doing it. Um, Jelly Roll is kicking ass. Absolutely, and I, he he just keeps evolving. That last album was a, a complete killer. monster. It was yes. killer, and it even changed like even went outside of his box totally yes. right. for that album, and it was amazing. It, it did so well. So hell yeah, I'm just, not even gonna lie. I mean, when I first heard Jelly Roll was way back when he did the I think it was called No Filter with Lil White. And they did an album together. Wow. And I was like, who the hell is this Jelly Roll dude? And then didn't really hear much of him. And then five years later, he's blowing up. I'm like, oh, shit, that dude that did an album with Lil White? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now yeah. he's just, he's Jelly Roll, man. I mean, he's running the fucking scene right now. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what, what has been like the craziest thing that you have done since you started doing music as far as music goes as far as music goes yes um uh, i guess hmm i mean other than the party at the farm thing we did some crazy shit for that we lit like a 20-foot brush pile with a bunch of pallets on it but I don't know, I guess just hitting up other artists. Most people are like, oh, so-and-so's out of my league and shit like that. And you know what I mean? They keep themselves down here when they're trying to aim up here. And I'm like, I'm aiming up here. I'm 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything I do. So I'll message Adam Calhoun, whoever the hell, and be like, hey, man, how do I get on a track with you? Like, how do we work on a project? Whatever. I don't fucking care. We had Calhoun on. Yes. It was, in a, it was on our first season. Yes. Yep, I saw that episode, actually. 32,000 uh, live views. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It was a, it was, mm-hmm. that was a good show. Yeah. But he was he he's really cool. He's really down to earth. He's real as shit. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, Very much he's so. He's real cool. Very much so. Man, that would be like I don't know, you keep asking who would I dream of doing music with or something. I guess my like dream chill, like not even doing music would just be sit around a fire and smoke with Adam and fucking up church, man. That'd be badass. That would be I don't fun. care if we didn't even talk about music, just sit and <laughs> the shit for a couple hours. That'd be some interesting conversations though. Oh yeah, really? You know, yeah. Because you got Adam that's working on his last hip hop album, country yes. rap album, and I feel like there was like a subliminal message when he said that. Though he specifically said last rap album, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, he's done." No, I he, I think he's, he's got something drop, up his. Sleeve. I think he's going to drop a country album or something else. Yeah, I think he's going to surprise the game. Which, in a right. way, I think I think Jelly slid out of that fully like yeah. that last album there was maybe like five seconds of flow yeah so, right so man dude any last minute i know you, we did shout out some plugs in the beginning is there any last minute shout out some plugs we're getting to the end of our time um last minute shout outs definitely my kids they're too young to be listening but they might see this one day absolutely um no, not really, man. Just my producer, no. my old lady, and family. My oh, boy Ben. Yeah. Definitely Ben. He's been one of my biggest supporters. That's what right I'm on, doing. dude. Well, man, dude, hold tight for us. Uh, we're going to do a promo for this episode as soon as we're done with this. But thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for sharing, oh, yeah. sharing your story with our fans. Thank you, thank you. Uh, definitely, when you start getting new music and everything's dropping, hit us up so we'll send it out and share. It. Uh, oh yeah, it'll be coming quick too. Uh, hey, we're watching, we're waiting, man. Yeah. So, so thank you again. But if you want to go ahead and hang tight, and we're gonna wrap yep. up the show, and then we'll come right back to you. Okay, Bubba. Yeah, give me Sounds just good. a few Thanks minutes. Thanks for having okay. me, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you again on. for coming on. Thank you. Hell yeah! Thanks for having me. Y'all have a good one. You, you too. You too. Thank you. So man, really cool yes, dude. Yes. I can't wait to see so. the stuff he's gonna produce. He is he he looks like he's about to just make a whole he's bunch on the rails. I, I, I want to see. I want to see what he's got. I want to see what he's bringing. Yep, absolutely. So we're at that time. Let me get it get going. Time. So for all your podcast needs, get a hold of Wyatt here at Wave One Media. He is killing it. He's got some very few time slots left. Make sure you get a hold of him for to get a, your podcast on and streaming. He works hard. He's a great dude. Get a hold of Wave One Media. Yep. Hey, all the graphics, all the t-shirts, all the hats, all the posters, all the websites, all that stuff, all your needs, get a hold of me at JK Multimedia Productions. I can fulfill your dreams. That one didn't go out so well. I can fulfill your dreams. It's not like a pedophile. <laughs> Come on, we will make sure you get and what it, you And need. it was so cool before. <laughs> no, seriously, let, let JK Multimedia tell your story. Uh, we got so many different options. A really great team. And yeah. And I'm then on. Miranda Monday, manager, networking. I'm not even going to do it. I'm leaving the poor raccoon out. I okay. know you took him out once, but I won't ever say it again. Uh-huh. I'm not going to say anything about you hunting raccoons and uh-huh. sitting under people's porches or anything like that. Very handy. <laughs> No, seriously, Miranda's working really hard, reaching out to so many managers and networks and artists and influencers out there. Get a hold of us. She can make sure she gets a hold of somebody. If you're looking at somebody that's been on the show and you want a network, get a hold of her. She will make it happen. Yep, absolutely. So, (sighs) that's hard to do some of that with a broken rib. It's like, but I am falling. Don't breathe breathe so deep. I want to have a hyperbilly. No. <laughs> so yeah. So um, yeah. You all have hated a Monday once or twice in your day. So, so let, let Monday, Monday love you. you. Thanks, guys. Thanks See you for next coming week, out, guys.